guess I'll do it this way. Awesome, I'm gonna go ahead and make it full screen. Awesome, okay. So today we're gonna be talking about credit, uh, credit basics. Credit is a huge part of our lives. Um, many of us may not even notice, but credit is involved in everything we do as adults. Um, and it's super important. I wish that I would have had this information when I was 18, 19, 20 years old. Um, so I hope that when you guys are listening to all of this, you're taking notes, you're taking screenshots, whatever it is, because some of this information, well, all of this information is super um, informative, but also we just need it. Um, you're gonna find out how much you need good credit for everything we do in life. Um, so I think it's a super important uh, topic and timely too. So let's go ahead and get started. So the main topics we're gonna be covering is understanding credit, right? So just even knowing what credit is. Number two, impact. The impact of having good credit or not so good credit and how that can impact our lives. Uh, number three, credit scores. So what kind of different things go into our credit scores? Number four, credit reports. We're gonna talk about the three main houses that house our credit reports. Uh, number five, building credit. So if you don't have any credit um, or you've been looking at how to build positive credit, we're gonna talk about that as well. And then number six, if you have been in, in a point where maybe you spent too much money on your credit cards or your student loans or something like that, um, we're gonna talk about rebuilding credit. All right, let's go ahead and start. So understanding credit. Credit can be described as money you're given to use now, but must be paid back, right? So most of us um, have either at least one credit card or want to apply for a credit card, or maybe we have a car loan, different things like that. That's what credit is. It's money that is not ours and we are um, obligated to pay back, right? So we um, get this debt under our name and we have to pay it back, right? We sign the dotted line, we sign that contract to pay that money back. Um, and it's considered your financial reputation as a borrower, right? So we all know we have this number and whether that number may be positive or negative, um, it can really just kind of be a big deal in our lives with everything that we do. We're gonna talk about in a second, the different things that credit scores are looked for. And sometimes we may not even realize how much they're tracking our credit scores for different things nowadays. Um, but it's your reputation, right? And I always give this example um, if I have $1,000, and this is just an example, if I have $1,000 and Val asked me to borrow $1,000, but I know that Val doesn't really pay back on time, uh, she has this reputation for not paying back, uh, maybe she'll pay me back half, but then the other half she never pays back, I don't really want to let her borrow my $1,000, right, because I worked hard for that and I earned that money. And that's the same thing with these financial institutions, with lenders. They don't wanna let you borrow money whenever your reputation, right? Your credit score is telling them, hey, this is a risky uh, borrower. So we're gonna talk about those different things. So understanding credit, um, keep in mind that it takes time to build it and to establish it. It's not gonna be overnight. It takes years to do that. Um, I actually did a, a course on this last night on understanding credit and people were asking me, how long will it take for me to have an 850 score? And I'm like, years like it's not going to happen you know when you're 24 25 it could but it takes a long time and it's hard work um so number one negative information is retained for seven years so that's why it's so important and we're going to see the trending theme for this whole presentation is being able to pay all your payments on time every time every month um, because negative information is on your your credit score on your file on your history for seven years which is a really long time I don't know about you guys, but in seven years, I hope to have a family, buy a house, all those things. So if negative things on my credit score are gonna stay there for seven years, that's gonna really limit me on those options, right? On buying a home or getting that dream car, whatever it may be. Um, so negative information is retained for seven years and that's the same for number two. Collection accounts are reflected from seven years date of charge off. So we never want things to go into collection. Um, so always keeping an eye on those things. Um, number four, positive information can remain indefinitely, which is awesome. That's a good thing. That's good news. And no credit also can make it difficult for you to borrow, right? So um, when I was about 20, I want to say 21 or 22, I wanted to get my dream car, right? And I had amazing credit. So I went to the dealership and I was like, here's my credit score. This is what I need. This is what I want. 
And although I had awesome credit, they still considered me to have young credit, which is sometimes hard for borrowers to want to give you money because they say, okay, well, you have a great credit score, but you also have only had a credit history for two years. So we still don't see if you're a reliable person that we can rely on to pay back this loan. So I had to get a co-signer. Thank God for mom and dad, right? But I want you guys to have this information. Um, that way you don't have to have a co-signer. You can be independent and be financially savvy. All right. Let me go next. Oh. There we go. All right. Impact. Okay. So good credit qualifies you for low money saving interest rates on credit cards. And credit history affects other aspects of your life, such as number one, job opportunities. This is super huge and we're seeing it more now in this time. Um, I do know when I joined the credit union almost four years ago, um, I got my credit score ran, right? Because they wanna make sure that they're hiring someone who is a financially responsible person in, even in their own personal finances and their own personal life that they can um, just be that responsible person. So. Just think about that whenever you guys are ready to start getting those careers. A lot of jobs nowadays and careers are um, running your credit score. Um, number two, utilities and cell phones. Um, how high or how low your credit score is. It may, um, sometimes with utilities, you have to pay a higher down payment because your score is lower. I know for cell phones, it's that way, whether it's good or bad, your credit score. Um, they require you to put down a bigger down payment or no down payment at all. So those are just things that we want to watch for. Um, banking, some banks um, don't require a credit score, but I know at, a, at our credit union, Addition Financial, they do. So just different things like that. And I'm sure you guys know if you're living away from home, um, rental housing opportunities, they do check your credit score just to make sure that you are going to be someone they can rely on to pay back, right? All right. And if you guys have any questions while I'm going through this, please feel free to um, ask them. Okay. So good credit qualifies you for low money saving interest rates. And we're going to see in a second an example of someone who has the same loan amount, the same fine, uh, month term, right? And then just different rates. And we're going to see how drastic that is um, when it comes to having that good credit score. Um, you get lower interest on rates and on credit cards, on auto loans, on mortgage rates, all those things. And I like to save money as much as I can. So if Having a decent credit score and a positive credit score is gonna allow me to do that, I'm all for it. I'm gonna do everything that I need to do um, to obtain that. Lower car payments, interest, I'm sure you guys know this. Um, a lot of insurance companies these days are decreasing your auto premiums um, uh, based on your credit score, which is super awesome. Home insurance premiums and less money required for security deposits uh, on all aspects, whether it's getting a phone plan at Verizon or getting your utilities turned on or even getting that first apartment on your own, um, depending on your credit score, those things can happen. All right, so here's this example. Uh, the amount financed for good credit, 12,500. The same for bad credit, 12,500. The finance rate, 1.99 for good credit, which is a super awesome rate. Finance rate for the bad credit is 14.5%, which is a huge jump, right? Finance term is the same for both 60 months. And then the monthly payment for a good credit is 220. The monthly payment for bad credit is 292. And maybe you're like, well, that's not much of a difference. It's like 70 odd dollars. It's not that crazy of a difference. But over the life of the loan, you're going to end up paying so much more money because of that bad credit, right? And having a, a really high rate. So the difference per month is only $72. That's not too much, right? We don't really think about it that much. But the difference for the entire loan is $4,331, right? Over the life of the loan, over the 60 months, you're going to end up paying $4,000 more than someone with good credit, right? So when you look at it in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty important to have that good credit score because um, I would love to save four grand over 60 months. Um, so that's just a good way of just seeing it how good credit and bad credit can positively or negatively um, affect our lives. All right. Credit scores. Okay, so this is a super awesome slide and I'm gonna stay here for a while um, because I want you guys to understand what makes your credit score your credit score, right? So what are the numbers that are being judged in order for this credit score to happen? So 35% of your credit score is payment history. 
And like I said, we're gonna see throughout this entire presentation that payment history is so crucial for your score, right? Paying on time, never being late, never letting anything get into default or collections is 35% of your score. 30% um, is the amount owed, right? So however much you owe from your, let's say your credit line is $5,000 between all your loans, however much you owe of that 5,000, that's 30% of your score. 15% um, of your score is the length of credit history. So whether you've had credit um, for two years, four years, eight years, that's 15% of your credit score. Um, and then 10% is types of credit, right? So just having a, a diverse kind of different lines of credit and different things. Um, and then 10% is new credit. Any questions on this slide before I move on? Uh, sorry, I don't understand the types of credit. Like, what are the different types? Yeah, we're going to get into that in one second. But the types of credit is basically like you have an auto loan, you have a credit card, you have a personal loan, just different kinds of credit, all money that is you're borrowing and paying back, but just different kinds. So not all one thing. Does that answer your question? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for your question. Okay. So just kind of reiterating what I just talked about, 35% is your payment history. Do you always pay on time? Do you pay at least the minimum? Even one late payment can have a negative impact. And like I said, that can stay on your credit score for seven years, which is a really long time. So if you make one bad mistake and then for the next six years, you're doing everything right, paying everything on time, it'll still show on your credit score that seven years ago, you were late this one time, which is kind of nuts. Um, that's why it's so important for us to keep an eye on that. 30% is amount owed, so how much do you owe of the debt, all in all, the big picture. Um, and they always recommend to never go over 30% of your balances, right? So um, when I was 18 years old, I believe I got my very first credit card and I would only use it for gas because at the time, the job that I was making, that was the most like feasible thing for me to do before I wanted to get comfortable with paying, learning how to pay this credit card um, and how this whole new world works. And so I only would use it for gas. I would pump like 25 bucks every two weeks in my car. Um, and that was enough because my limit, I think I got approved for like 500 bucks when I was 18. So I always made sure to keep it under 30%. Um, and obviously I would always try to make sure that if I was putting something on my credit card that I knew I could pay it back. I never wanted to live beyond my means because that's when we kind of get into that snowball of just charging everything to our credit card and knowing that we can't pay it back. So um, always keep that under 30%. That is a good rule of thumb. 15% is length of credit history. So have you been using credit for two years, 10 years, 15 years, whatever it may be? Um, and then this is the types of credit. Do you have a variety of different types of credit? So we have, for example, credit cards, auto loan, mortgages, student loans, just different kinds of things. Um, a lot of lenders like seeing a diverse portfolio in your credit score. Like they wanna see that you can manage different kinds of lines of credit. And then 10% is new credit. Um, and that is gonna just show basically, have you applied for new credit lately? Like for example, if you um, went out and bought a new car, that would be 10% of your, your score. Um, when they run your credit, a new credit card, different things like that. All right. Okay, so some credit scores, some numbers to look for. Um, bad credit scores are anywhere from 300 to 560. Fair, 560 to 660, good, 660 to 725, um, very good, 725 to 760, and an excellent 760 to 850. I have seen some scores over 850, it's pretty insane, um, but most of the time when they're over 850, they're like um, seniors, you know, they're in their, well in their, in their 60s and their 70s, so that takes time. Um, don't be bummed if you're not an 890 in two years, it really does take time. Um, but anywhere in between good and very good is awesome. Um, you'll really see the benefits of having a good credit score as you start to make those kind of more adult purchases in life. Um, so there's just some numbers to look for if you've ever wondered, hey, where, where do I fall in this category? Okay, so credit reports. Um, we have Ecofact, Experian, and TransUnion. Those are the three main houses. So it depends on the lender. Some lenders go with Equifax. Some lenders go with Experian. Um, that's why sometimes your scores can kind of vary, but some lenders like to choose different. Other lenders will choose all three and do like a median of all three. 
Um, and if you ever wondered what your credit score is, you can order one free credit report a year right here on this website, annualcreditreport.com. I have done it before and I do it every year, once a year, um, because it does not affect your credit score. I know there's like a lot of um, people, like you can be scared to check your credit report because you don't want your score to go down, but this one is a free one and it doesn't harm your credit score. And it actually will mail to you, it will mail it to you or it'll send you like a secure email and you can print it out. Um, and it'll tell you every single thing that's under your name, your social security. And I just recommend, even if you know what your credit score is, I recommend doing this once a year um, because there's a lot of fraud that goes on and you just wanna make sure everything that's under your name is in fact yours. You have applied for these different credits, um, different types. I have a friend actually, her and her husband were gonna buy a house in January and whenever you know the lenders were running up their scores and doing all that stuff, she found out that her credit score had been used for all sorts of things in a different state. And though it wasn't her, and though she could prove that it wasn't her, it takes time for that to come off. Um, and it takes process and um, different, they have to file all these different forms and stuff like that. So I just recommend it one, um, one time a year, just make sure that you do that and just kind of make sure everything's in good standing. All right. I also wanted to share really quick um, because of COVID right now and really any time mm -hmm. like during an election season or during a time when people are stressed out or yeah. distracted, um, a lot of times scammers are more likely to commit identity theft and types of fraud. So yeah. right now because of COVID, the annualcreditreport.com is actually offering from each of these, you can pull your credit report once a week. So if you, oh, wow. think, yeah, I just found that That's out. Awesome. If, if you think you've been maybe a victim of it, um, or you've had anything kind of weird happen, um, right now you can pull one free one per week from each of these through April. Awesome. Um, yeah. So I did want to share that because that's some, something I just found out not too long ago as well. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing, Val. That's super awesome. Convenient. Once a week, it doesn't hurt. Just go on there and check and make sure everything's good. Um, we have, even at the credit union, been seeing a lot of fraud happening. Um, and so just make sure that's not happening to you. That's awesome. Very cool. Okay, so I'm gonna skip this one. So maintaining a healthy score by doing the following. Number one, of course, pay on time. Uh, it's super important to pay on time. I always like to pay early, just out of sight, out of mind. Uh, pay off balances every month. That's why I encourage you guys to not live beyond your means. Um, that way you can pay off your balance every month. Um, whenever you are paying off your balances, your credit score shoots up so high because the lender is saying, hey, this person doesn't need this money per se. I mostly charged a lot of things to my credit card because they have awesome perks like rewards and cash back cards, different things like that. But I always make sure to pay off my balance because I don't want any type of, I don't want to have to pay an interest on the money it gets kind of messy when you do that. So paying off your balances every month, but of course emergencies happen. If that's not feasible, at least 30% of it. Um, diversify your credit portfolio, like we were talking about earlier, just having maybe one or two different credit card, maybe one that can benefit you for gas or one that can benefit you for whatever it is that you need books, different things. Um, and then never max out your credit cards, right? So if my limit was $500 when I was 18, I thought I turned this off. Let me decline this. Sorry about that. Okay, how do I get back into this? Uh, where did it go? <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Give me one moment. All right, where'd it go? Here we go. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, all right, so don't max out your credit cards like I was saying. If my limit was $500 whenever I was 18, never max that 500 out. 
always keep it under that 30%. It's super important. Okay, so the power of time credit reports reflect activity from seven years from the time activity is reported. So whether that's good or bad, you know, that's gonna um, have a positive or a negative um, outcome. So making sure again that we pay everything on time every month as much as we can. Okay, we just talked about that. So your credit report will include, and if you do this um, thing that Val was talking about, how you can do it every single week um, on that website, it's gonna include all of this information, your name, former names, different things like that, marital status, employment history, uh, credit limits. It's just gonna include everything about you on like a couple sheets. All right. And delinquent accounts, um, we obviously don't want our, ourselves to fall into um, any type of collection or delinquent loans. Um, so making sure to keep your eyes on if you do have student loans, um, making sure that, you know, I know right now everything is in forbearance, but just making sure that you know whenever you're supposed to pay and never letting those student loans go into collection. All right. Okay, we we're talking about fraud sum. It is helpful to immediately place a fraud alert on your credit. Um, it lasts for 90 days. So if you do get um, any type of fraud on your credit or maybe, God forbid, if you get online and you do that annual report and you see something that's not yours, um, you can do that. It's for 90 days. It'll place a freeze on your credit score and on your credit. That way people can't keep applying um, under your social security number. Okay. Okay, so some ways to correct an error, if you want, want to take a screenshot of this or take a picture or write it down, um, you can dispute via email or by mail, um, tell the credit bureau in writing, um, dispute by giving facts. A lot of the time when they're different states, you can just prove that you've never lived in that state, different kind of things like that. All right. Okay, building credit. So if you don't have credit yet, these are going to be some good tips for you to establish credit. Um, as a young adult. So number one, opening a checking and savings account is the first, and I know probably all of you guys already have that, but that's the number one thing that we need to do um, in order to have that credit line. So for example, if you open an account with whatever your financial institution is, they get to see, okay, this person has a direct deposit, this person has great saving habits, we can approve them for a credit card, right? So number one is opening that checking and savings account. Number two is being consistent. Um, being consistent with your payments, being consistent um, in your account, everything that you do financially being consistent. And then number three, applying for a department store or gas card. So whatever suits your needs uh, most, uh, you know your life better than anyone. So whatever works for you, um, make these credit cards work for you, not the other way around. So something that can give you some rewards. Um, if you like to travel eventually when we all get to travel one day, um, making sure that you get those perks back. Um, secured credit card or a loan. Um, if you don't know what a secured credit card is, it's basically your own money. Um, you give your own money to the financial institution and they kind of freeze it and you can use it as a credit card, but it is your own money um, as opposed to a regular credit card that is completely the, um, the institution's money and then you just borrow it and pay it back. And then number five, Get a co-signer. Sometimes we might need a co-signer. Um, the goal is to not have to have co-signers um, and we can just be financially savvy ourselves. Okay. Okay, so understanding all of the terms and conditions before signing, right? So making sure that um, before you sign for that credit card, you know what rate you're getting. Don't just say, oh, they gave me a $2,000 limit. This sounds great. I love it. No, make sure that you know your rate. Make sure that you investigate, hey, that this card is this card going to charge me $250 every year for having this card? Making sure that you know all of those different um, things about that credit line. Um, don't let your bills for credit exceed 10 to 20% of your monthly uh, take-home income, which I said um, earlier, just not living beyond your means, making sure that whatever you charge on your credit card, you can in fact pay back. And then always pay more than a minimum payment due and on time. Um, a lot of the times, if you have a credit card, it'll tell you, oh, minimum payment due, 16 bucks, something super small. And we're like, oh, that's great. I'll just pay 16 bucks. Always pay more than that minimum. Um, and then paying on time is super important. Okay, so some tips to help maintain good credit. It's just kind of going to talk about everything I've been mentioning um, right now. Making 100% of your payments on time. That's number one. 
paying off your balances every month. Keep your credit utilization low, right? So if my limit's 500 bucks, I don't even want to get near 500. Um, avoid opening too many new credit cards or loans at once. That can impact your score negatively. Um, keeping your accounts open. I always get this question um, anytime I do this kind of um, financial literacy. Keeping your accounts open is super important, right? So let's say you got your first credit card when you were 18 years old and the limit is 500 bucks. And you're like, well, I've moved on from this credit card. It doesn't really work for me anymore. Or let's say you got a department store credit card and you don't really like that department store anymore. You don't really shop there anymore. I encourage everyone to keep those accounts open because they're the ones that are gonna show a longer history, right? So if you've had that credit card since you were 18 and you don't really use it, Make sure to keep it open, charge maybe 20 bucks, 30 bucks on it once a month, just to make sure that whenever that borrower looks at your credit um, score, your credit history, they can say, oh, this person has had this credit card for seven years or eight years, and they have always been on time every time. So keeping those accounts open are super uh, important. Diversifying your credit portfolio, like we talked about, just having different ki kinds of credit, different lines of credit. Um, check your credit report annually or weekly, whichever one you want to do. Uh, it's good to know that we have those options. Don't close zero balance accounts like I was just uh, mentioning. We want to make sure that we keep everything that's been on our credit score positive for as long as we can. Know your card terms. Like I said, before you sign that contract for that credit card or whatever it may be, make sure that you know everything that goes into it. And then using cards for emergencies only. Um, sometimes. Obviously, we don't want to put big purchases on there, but sometimes we do have emergencies. It happens. It's life. Um, you can, of course, use that. That's what it's there for, a rainy day, but always making sure that you pay on time and always try to keep it under that 30%. Okay, and then we just talked about all of this. Rebuilding credit. Um, hopefully, we're not at this stage, but if we are, these are some good um, tips on rebuilding credit. So paying on time again is number one every time. Repay old delinquencies. So sometimes we may have some things that are from when we were 18 years old or 19 years old and maybe we didn't even think that was on our credit score. I know a lot of times we can have hospital um, collections kind of bills on our credit score and we don't even realize that's on my credit score. So just repaying those old delinquencies um, first. And I always recommend paying the um, type of collection or delinquency that has the highest rate, right? So the one who is costing you more money, pay that one off first. Um, never, you don't ever wanna just put 20 here, 30 here, 50 here, 20 here, 30 here. Always make sure that you just focus on one. Usually it's the one with the highest rate that's costing you um, a lot of money and um, focus on that one and get that one paid off and then move on to the next and do it that way. Or whichever way works for you, but that would be my preferred method. Um, keeping the oldest accounts active, keep your balances significantly lower than the limit. So of course, if you're not exceeding that 30%, you should be good. And avoid excess credit applications. Okay, so some, some companies claim to repair. Um, there's a lot of different things out there um, on social media, on you just get ads for all these different kind of agencies that say, hey, if you pay us $20 a month or a one-time fee of $100, we promise that your credit score is going to jump up. Um, that's sometimes not usually the case, and I just want you guys to be aware of those things. Um, there's no legal way to remove accurate and timely information from your credit report, right? Um, so making sure that we don't fall for those kind of a things. It sounds nice, like, 30 point jump if you give me $100, but most of the time that won't happen, right? It takes time um, to be able to fix those things. Okay. So some tips and tricks, live within your means. Number one, create healthy money habits, uh, make and follow a budget. Budgeting to me is super huge. Um, it's the only way that I can do things in life is by budgeting. I am a super huge um, lover of budgeting. I budget everything in my life because I just wanna make sure that I'm prioritizing my spending, I'm prioritizing what I'm doing with my money um, because it reduces stress when I do those things. Um, so number four, prioritize your spending. Number five, reduce your debt. And number six, save, 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 save as much as you can. I don't know how feasible it is for you guys to save, 
how easy or how hard, but I just encourage you, even if it's 30 bucks a month, 40 bucks a month, depending on what your income may be, if you have an income at all, just anything that you can just to start having those healthy habits of saving. Um, it doesn't have to be this huge amount, but just as long as you're making that effort and that conscious effort to save your money, um, it'll benefit you in the long run. All right. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, Val and I will be more than happy and willing to answer some of your questions. Hi, so um, I've actually, I don't have a credit card at all. I've never applied for one or anything like that. And I typically pay everything in cash. Um, that's how I've always like managed my money. Um, right. I'm super old school. Um, mm -hmm. and, like I write all of my budgeting down like on pen and paper and stuff, which Me is too. like super, super old school. But like, um, like I understand like it's probably a good idea for me to just like, how would you recommend starting out? Like if you've never entered the land of credit, um, I guess I think you were talking a little bit about like a gas card or something like something where I can just start paying very small like payments um, to show that like I'm a responsible spender or something like that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I um, I was kind of raised with the mentality if you don't have enough cash, don't pay for it, don't get it. Um, my parents were definitely like they paid off their cars when they bought them. Like they didn't want anything to do with credit or credit lines, things like that. But like I was saying earlier, if you plan to buy a house one day or you plan to get a car or you plan to do different things, you're gonna need a credit score to show for it, right? So we have to do these things even though we don't want to. But yeah, I recommend starting small, um, whatever financial institution you're with right now um, or whoever you wanna be with, just kind of talk to them about some options of different credit cards, um, but I would start with a credit card. Uh, they probably will give you a smaller limit, which is great because you want to get used to kind of what it feels like to pay for a credit card and all that, those different things. And just, yeah, keeping your charges small, gas, um, a small grocery trip for 30 bucks or a slice of pizza, like just small things like that that you know that you can pay back and they're manageable. But for sure, I would get started on it. Um, and a secured card too, a secured credit card is a good option. It's your own money, um, basically, that you're using. But for sure, I would encourage you to, um, to get on it, to get started on that. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for your question, Jack. Anyone else? I had a question. Um, yeah. How far can you get along without a credit card? I mean, as far as, you know, you might, like, for example, if you don't ever want to be a homeowner, you can probably do great. If you don't ever want to um, have your like dream car, you can probably do great without it. But eventually you will need it, um, whether it's for a phone plan or for getting you know, hired at a job or for anything. Or student loans are, are the rates, different things like that. Um, I'm trying to, you just need it for everything. Like, and, and an adult and your adult life, you're going to need it for so many things. Um, so as far as you can get, but um, honestly, I would, I would get on, I would get on it for sure. Yeah, I think a lot of people worry that if you have a credit card that you're going to rack up debt and that you're going to have to use it for everything. Right. Um, I mean, I can say personally, I really, I try to, you know, I use my credit card for the things I know that I'm going to buy anyway, that we're already in the budget, um, yeah. so that I'm building that score, but it's not going to, you know, I'm not paying extra money to have it. And just so that when I do eventually purchase a house, then, you know, then I have that established, but you certainly don't need to you know, use it for everything and rack up a ton of debt and spend lots of right. money on it. Just to having a pattern of paying it off, you know, on time every time is huge. And if any of you are business majors too, especially, um, and you're applying for, you know, in the financial field, um, you know, they wouldn't let Karina and I teach these workshops if we didn't have um, credit established. Um, so it is really important if you're going into especially, I, I think a lot of careers are now pulling credit, but, um, but if, you, if you're a business major, a lot of um, the jobs you're going to apply for are gonna be looking for it. 
Um, but you don't have to have 10 credit cards open, don't have to rack right. up the debt, just getting into the habit of paying on time every time. Right. And that just goes with living um, in your means, right? Only charging things that you know that you can pay back. And like Val was saying, charging things that is, are in her budget anyway. She has to go grocery shopping. She budgeted for that. So just different things like that. I don't think it has to be this scary thing. And maybe it has been a scary thing for us. I know it was for me when I first got my first credit card, but um, just like those lenders want to see that you can pay on time every time and that you're responsible um, because they don't want to let you borrow $300,000 for a house if they don't know that you can pay a credit card. So it's important. Awesome. Any other questions? You mentioned that um, you typically we only get like one time a year to um, check our credit. Is yeah. that once every 365 days or once per like 2020, 2021, 2022 or something like that? I'm not exactly sure on that, but um, Val was just saying that you can do it once a week. Um, you can use those. I don't. I don't always recommend them, but you can use like Credit Karma and different things like that. They're not going to be a super accurate, um, like right down to the number, but they're going to give you a pretty rough estimate on what your score is looking like and kind of what is affecting your score. So for that, those kind of sites can be helpful. Um, the only thing that I don't like about those sites are that um, they'll like kind of recommend different credit card, different things like that, but those credit card companies are paying them to do that. So never click on those, never apply for those before doing your um, own research. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's probably just once a year. I don't know if it's every 365 or or what. I think it is every 365. And is my it? Okay. Personally, um, once we can't do once a week anymore, which I'm not sure if any of us need to do once a week necessarily. <laughs> you know, definitely like, you know, if something suspicious might have happened or you think someone might have gotten your credit card number, um, it's certainly, you know, it doesn't hurt to check it at this time. But right. um, what I recommend is since there are three different credit bureaus, while your score is going to differ a little bit by um, by credit bureau, checking, you know, checking TransUnion and then four months later, checking Experian and then four months later. Yeah. So then you're kind of cycling. And so you're actually checking three times a year. But um you know, kind of separating it out. Um, so that would be my recommendation. But I do think it's, I, I think it is 365. Um, and then the one thing too with Credit Karma that I didn't know, one of my friends actually um, was using it to check her score um, periodically. And it, it can be pretty accurate, but it's a little out of date. So she mm -hmm. actually found um, fra she found identity theft through that, but it was a credit card that had been opened in her name like six months prior. So wow. um, even though she was checking Credit Karma maybe once a month, um, it took about six months for that to catch up. Yeah. Right. Um, so you, it's it's good option, but if you have something kind of happening right now, you probably just want to get the official one. Awesome. Any other questions? Any other questions for Karina and Val? I guess I do have maybe one more, um, which is um, I know that with like these instances of fraud or like potentially like people stealing credit card information. I know like there are, are things when you scan or, or swipe your card or insert like chip readers or something like that, that can potentially steal like uh, your information. Um, do you have any sort of like recommendations for like ways to. What was that last part, Jack? I'm sorry. Avoid that. I know it's not me. always avoidable. Um, and like sometimes, sorry, uh, I know it's not always avoidable, but like, do you have any recommendations for ways in which you can like use cards uh, safely um, so that you're avoiding those kinds of risks? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the um, positives to a credit card is the safety uh, measures that they do have. Um, 
for example, if you went to the store and charged something on your actual debit card, which is linked to your checking account, and that was compromised, they could pull all that money out from your checking account, right? So whenever fraud happens with a credit card, it's a lot more, it's a better feeling knowing that it's not your money and they, they're super quick with it with the fraud. I went to Ikea the other day and they know I'm never at Ikea. So they flagged my card, different things like that. And it's not, the, I feel like credit cards are way safer than debit cards in that form. And also the chip is super awesome. I didn't really know about it before, um, but but prior to having a chip on our cards, whenever you went to, like, let's say you went to Target, you spent $50, um, and then Target's system was compromised, they could see your full entire um, debit card number, expiration date, your security code, but now having the chip on our cards, um, they actually, if, if you went and charged with a chip, um, and their system was compromised, um, now instead of saying your full entire uh, number and your and your um, security code and all that stuff it'll give them a random skew of symbols and numbers and different things so they can't do that as quickly as they could prior to the chip so I didn't know that before and now that I do I'm not as annoyed that my my company sent me a chip card like forced me to have a chip card I didn't want one but now that I know that I'm like I'm happy I have a chip card but yeah I think um, that was a roundabout answer to say credit cards are much safer than debit cards um, so yeah, I think you'll be all right. And I think one thing too, um, the gas stations can be a big spot for um, for credit card fraud. The skimmers that people will place in the yeah. have gotten really pretty, um, I would say sophisticated with it. <laughs> um, so I'm the crazy person at the gas pump. If something doesn't look right, I'm like tugging at it to make sure because something comes off. It was not supposed to be there. Um, <laughs> So if you're ever in doubt or something looks a little bit weird, walk into the gas station, tell them I want to put this much on this tank and just yeah. do it with the person instead of there uh, because it is so easy and like the cameras don't always catch them. And um, Florida is really bad for, for mm -hmm. I, I don't know why, I think because we, we're the crazy state sometimes for, <laughs> um, for but you know, it, it I remember our um, our fraud department sending an email one year just with like the list of all of the counties and all of the number of um, gas stations that were hit. And so it's really yeah. important, like if something just doesn't look right. And that's why I also recommend to pay with credit at the at the pump. Yeah. Yeah. It's recommended to always pay inside versus at the pump. And then just as a small, by the way, Wawa is the number one gas station for fraud in Florida. So just so you guys know, if you're ever at a Wawa, always stay inside. And it's so nice inside anyway. <laughs> it is. Get a hoagie, get a smoothie, whatever. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome, Jack. Any other questions? Going once. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the um, the survey in the chat again, just in case you weren't here earlier or you lost it. I'll go ahead and do that. So if you haven't filled that out yet, uh, if you can go ahead and do that before you go. Uh, if there aren't any more questions, thank you so much, Karina and Val, for coming. Um, of course, thank you. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I think you'll be back in a couple of weeks to talk about budgeting or, or something of that nature. So uh, that'll be a good one. It's, uh, it's, I think it's two weeks from tomorrow at 3.30. Uh, uh, awesome. If you all want to come to that, then that, that's another good one. So uh, again, thank you all for coming. And uh, we'll see you at the next one of these. Thank you.